Candy here and welcome back to another episode of City Skylines and last time out we built our castle on a hill and I hope you guys enjoyed it surrounded by the Lordy Lord suburb and we will come back to some naming later on there's a few areas that I do want to name and this will be one of them we've had some great suggestions so thank you all for those so we will come back to that but yeah I think it turned out all right but there was one change before we crack on today that I do want to make and that was suggested by both QFaze and Sarah B in the comments. But that was about this flag up here. This one really needs to be an Oridan flag. So let's go right ahead and change that. So we are just going to use Bob for this. I think it's in the sub building here. We find that flagpole. There we go. Yeah, it is set to the French flag. So if we search for Oridan in here, we have got our Oridan flag. So let's let's replace that. But I also think actually as well. What we should do is make it just a little bit lower because it now looks a little bit ridiculous because the flagpole's an awfully a lot larger than the French flag that was originally there. So if we just use this height adjuster, we can just bring down the height a bit ever so slightly so it looks a little bit more sensible. Like that, I think looks good. Let's remember to tick the green button. And there we have it. So that really was a great suggestion and one that I clearly completely missed within this build. So yeah loving the fact that we've got an Oridan flag now up there so thank you both QFaze and Sarah B for mentioning that. Now today we are going to be doing a little bit of a filling the gaps episode so if we zoom out around our downtown we've got three kind of fairly significant areas here that absolutely need filling in with relatively high density stuff to blend in from this downtown centerpiece that we have going on here. We've obviously got more areas that we need to come out and do here this is not the end of Oridan yet but for today, I would like to concentrate on these two areas here and filling those in. So first up, we're going to be doing an office park in this area. And then we're actually going to be doing a sports complex over here as well, with the last remaining sports stadium that we have not used in Oridan yet. And I think it fits quite nicely into that space. As I can see, we've got a rogue flying car. Always. <laughs> And there is one other thing that I would like to also do today, and that is touch on tourism. So we've got an awful lot of tourist points in Oridan. We have an awful lot of tourists using our public transport. If I just show you the stats right now, we have 5,275 tourists per week using public transport, which is pretty high, I think, because we have an awful lot of unique buildings in this city. And I've actually seen that figure get up to six and a half thousand at one stage. So it's a little bit lower at the moment. So we're going to be touching on how to put in tourist bus routes and walking tours around the city as well this episode. So yeah, a few odd jobs. Let's crack on. Okay, so starting off with our office park over here. And the reason why I've chosen to do this is we've got pretty balanced demands at the moment. We need a little bit of everything. And I feel like we've got a few offices this side. We've got some residential this side. And I think we need some kind of height in buildings to transition down from this peak of downtown into a slightly more lower kind of medium density builds either side so that's the reason why i've decided to go for offices because we can mix in a little bit of it cluster a little bit of water ball and a little bit of the traditional usual offices into this as well now because we've got pedestrian areas this side and also over here i am going to continue that theme so essentially this whole part of the downtown this side will be mostly pedestrian but with big roads coming all the way between it which i think is realistic as well so we're not pedestrianising the whole thing, but we are making use of lots of lovely pedestrian walkways. And I'm just going to check our pedestrian district as well. Yeah, because it's not fully covering this area at the moment. So let's just go ahead and make sure that our districts are laid out nice and neatly. And obviously, because we've just put that road in there, it's spilling out here, which is exactly what has happened over this side as well. So let's just keep it nice and contained like that. We can neaten it up a little bit later on. OK, so in terms of a road layout, let's go ahead and get that in first. So I am thinking that what we will do is create a little segment here that we can put uh, one of our plazas in. So let's just draw this out and make sure that we're getting the measurements. What I want is a six by six, exactly like that. So let's just cut this section off here. And I think what we will do is the same thing the other side as well. So we want to make sure we're getting six units in here. I've made that slightly too long. So let's bring it back just like that. And I think actually this side as well, so that we can get more buildings in this space. We will just bring this down 
to about there. We can reposition this cargo terminal in a second. And actually just to touch on the service points as well, the cargo is at relatively high capacity, but we have still got some left over. So I'm thinking it's going to be OK. If it's not, then we may need to put in another service point for this whole massive pedestrian area because it is actually just one area rather than being separated out. But at the moment, it's doing absolutely fine. So I think we can leave it. So I think this side, what we will do is just bring this into this node here, create a little bit of extra walkability there. And then what I'd like to do in here is put in a big block of wall to wall just to start off with. So let's come into our find it and buildings tab and we'll go to wall to wall offices. Now within this, there's different sort of themes of buildings. And as mentioned before, I quite like to stick to the same theme so that we get realistic looking, slightly larger buildings. So that is exactly what we are going to go for here. So I'm actually going to place in four of these. And what we're going to do is create a bit of an office block out of them. So I'll spin this one round and then what we'll do is just use a tiny bit of mover to drag this back into place. And if we use Alt and the arrow keys, we can get a little bit more precision on, the, on it. Alt and Shift together gives us even more precision with move it. So let's go ahead again and drag these buildings into place. And of course, we will need to use spawn points just to make sure that these buildings are all making sense and that they can be accessed by all the necessary service vehicles as well. But by lining them up, yeah, the alleyways line up quite nicely. That's a little bit slopey there, so we'll fix the terrain a little bit later on too to make sure that that's viable. But just like that seems to work well. And then we get this lovely little tabled plaza in the middle of all the offices in the centre there. So I quite like how that all fits together. We want to make sure that this square in the middle is absolutely perfect. So yeah like that isn't looking too bad. And then what it does is just give us this slightly larger looking office complex from the outside, nice and consistent. What we can do as well is come through and reset the building so we get the same themes on them. So I think we will go for this kind of like turquoise and red pattern that we have on both of these two buildings here. So let's just grab move it and we'll select both of these ones and we'll hit reset. And we've got the turquoise on that one already. So we'll just carry on with this building and reset until we get that same pattern. So now that's really nice and super consistent between those four buildings and certainly kind of looks like it is one building rather than four put together into a block like that. And then just to give it a little bit more access, let's go ahead and draw in another pedestrian road up this side. So we'll try and get that in as close as possible and let's turn off road guideline snapping. We just want this to snap to angle and in fact we'll take off grid as well and then we can get that in really nice up to there. And in fact, actually, what would be a good idea is to draw this up to the key so that they have walkable access onto that key at the end here. But we don't want to cover up the nice pattern, actually, in the pedestrian road. So let's just draw it back a tiny bit and then lift it up to make sure it's the right height at the end there. OK, so that's our first set of buildings in. And you can see this terrain is actually pretty slopey over here. So it's going to be an interesting one to detail up, but we will come to that. So just very quickly in terms of these other spaces here, there's a couple of assets from the Plaza's Promenades DLC that I would like to get in here. And the first one is this big glass framed plaza here, which I quite like. We have got another one over this side going down into our stadium plaza here. So I think it makes sense to have one this side too, kind of frame that off a little bit. And we are using the different type of roads, I'd add. I didn't cover that. We're using the sandstone roads rather than the blue stone that we have used in other areas, which I think just helps make it look a little bit smarter. And actually, the tree median to it has a slightly different shape, which I quite enjoy as well. And then the other asset that we will use here as well is the big fountain plaza. And I'm thinking I'll actually have the main entrance this side, so it will encourage people to walk all the way around. Now, with this as well, if we use Move It to reset it, and again, if you don't have Move It, you can just plop it in multiple times and it will have the same effect. We just want to reset it so we get that sandstone base to it so it sits really nicely in with the rest of this area. Now, you can see it's a little bit wonky on the terrain, but I actually don't hate that aesthetic. I quite like the slopey walls, as we talked about in the castle build as well. I think it has quite a nice look and feel to it. In terms of the positioning of the fountains, I think it's right to have them like this, that you can kind of see them from the main road. If we span it round, we just have one and we get lose the aesthetic of the two back-to-back -back fountains. So I think in terms of orientation, that is the better way around. 
And one thing that does annoy with the pedestrian roads is the fact that we lose the decals in the middle here. So we will come in in the detail and time lapse with the actual decals themselves, the sandstone ones, like this, and fill in these gaps so that we don't look quite so strange in these areas. On the other side of this block here as well, we will do a more manual plaza. So we'll place in decals and some props and kind of probably food trucks and that sort of thing. A bit of a food court plaza for the office workers down this side. But we'll come to that again in the detail and time lapse. So we go to our IT cluster buildings. There's a couple from here that I would definitely like to use. And the first one is this one, which I think we can align pretty nicely into here. And actually, let's just grab our road again and we'll draw that right up to the key. Because if we have two of these, you can merge these pretty nicely and fuse them together. But actually, what I quite like to do here is do a little bit of a back to back job on them. So I think actually we'll have this one space further that way so that, yeah, the centre of them are kind of aligned. So we do get this quite nice aesthetic. It looks like one office complex, but still two separate buildings. So rather than actually fusing them, we're just creating a slightly different pattern here and using them in a different way. These little walkways through the centre as well, I think, lend themselves quite nicely to having little plaza areas and more open court areas for the workers. Maybe a bit of green grass and a bit of green space as well around it either side. So I think next to them as well, we will actually add in one of these buildings here too. So let's leave a little bit of a gap between there. But this one has quite, the, quite a nice little sort of step down all the way around apart from this side here which we can have the alleyway so again that lends ourselves to doing a nice bit of detailing around these office buildings to bring that all together and again what we're doing is just trying to find tall buildings that are going to help to transition down from this downtown now the other side i'd like to see something a little bit larger and i think we'll have two of these it cluster buildings we've got a group of them over there as well so i think that just helps to create a bit of consistency and then just looking further into the plaza, the other big buildings I would like to incorporate are actually the two really tall IT cluster buildings. So first up, we have this one. And then we also have this one. And these are the two tallest buildings that we have from zonable options within the game. So I think this will help to create quite a nice little pop in height. So we'll place this one here next to it. And again, you can see the terrain is really pushing down quite a lot around them, which is fine. We can tidy that up in the detailing. But then if we just check this out from a skyline point of view, again, we're getting a little bit of a peak over here, which is exactly what I want. It's a very tiny, subtle peak where we start to transition on down to these taller offices here, going on down to the slightly lower medium density residential over this side as well. I would also like to use some of the wall to walls in here too. So let's just go into our wall to wall offices because there are some really nice assets that we can use in a bit of a repeatable pattern here, I think. So these ones I really like in a pattern and I think we will just have three of them very simply put here. And again, let's just use Move It to reset these so we get consistency in the colours there. I think we will use that red and yellow one, which sort of looks like company colours somewhere. Then we get these nice little individual courtyards in the side of each building. So I think rather than kind of moving it around and trying to create an interesting shape, this actually works quite nicely along the street here. Helps to break up that street front, but also looking like it's one consistent building. So what I will do now is just do a very quick time lapse of getting the rest of our office buildings in here. And we'll be using the same kind of themes, using a bit of wall to wall, a little bit of merging to create some nice patterns, a little bit more generic office and also some IT cluster too.
So there we go. That is all of our office buildings in. And what it does give us is, yeah, this really nice little kind of extra element to the skyline. I particularly like the view, actually, from Orange Ink over here. Just fills in a bit of a gap that we had in the skyline there, which I quite like. And yeah, it gives us a little second peek around our IT office district over this side. So we have just come in and used a lot of different variety of buildings, some regular officing, wall to wall, and IT cluster as mentioned. And it just gives us a few different variations in height and styles of buildings. I've tried to be consistent with the decals as far as possible on a lot of these buildings. And then up this end, I have actually just leveled off all of this section. So it's all nice and flat now because it was pretty unworkable, frankly, before we wouldn't have been able to detail up all of these little areas nicely without it being super flat. So we can add our decals the way we like and the such like. So I think that's looking quite good. And then we've just done a gentle slope as we go down the hill. Now, clearly, there is a lot of work to be done on the terrain around a lot of these buildings. This side in particular, you can see that doesn't really sit too right. So I think what we're going to do is a similar thing to what we've done over here and use little bits of key wall just to help accentuate and define and get rid of some of this weird landscaping around all of these buildings here. But there's a lot of detailing to be done in and around all of these offices. So we will be finishing that off in the detailing time lapse. But that is the framework for it now. And there is an awful lot of people actually coming up and down here, which is quite nice to see. And in terms of public transit as well, they have got access to the tram stop over here where I've added in a pathway through, just connecting that up nice and simply here to the tram stop. They have got a train station right over this side and they've also got Metro really handy. So I kind of don't think they really need anything else for this particular area here. They've got a few different options on the go and there will be more options when we come to do this area. So for now, that will do for that build. So the next thing that I do want to do is come on to the tourism buses. So what we are going to do is create an absolutely monumental sightseeing bus stop tour thing. Now, I'm pretty sure ages ago I did actually put in, yeah, the sightseeing bus step over here because I had intended to put these in when I did the amusement park and I put in a line and I really wasn't happy with it. So I deleted it out and cut it out of the episode so you wouldn't have seen that. But we do already have the bus depot in, so we don't need another one of those. But what we do want to do is go around the whole city and add in our bus stops. Now, the way that this works and the way that I'm going to design it for Oridan, at least, is we are going to have a bus stop in each main tourism area. Now, you can see these purple bits are where tourism is highest or it's the most attractive, has the most high appeal for tourists. So it's weirdly the car parks at Noberg Ring. <laughs> the holiday park around the coast is very attractive, apparently. Thank you. <laughs> A little mansion area. Some slightly odd things, but what we're going to do is focus on actually what the tourist attractions really are in our minds. So it will be things like Exe Island, although we can't bring a bus out there, clearly. The main downtown here, Universal Studios, OAP Plaza, certainly the new Castle District as well. And things like Williams Memorial Mount and the such like as well would be included in that. So we'll have one stop on each main bit. So... <laughs> Let's start it off over this side of the city, I think. Now, on Stanton Island, we definitely want to have a stop near Liberty Rock. So let's go ahead and place one in here. And we are on that, so all we need to do, and weirdly, when I tested this, I couldn't see the line. So I'm wondering <laughs> if they are actually going to appear here or not. But let's put them right at the end of the cable car here so that they can get nice and quickly up to Liberty Rock, should they so wish. And also actually up to our Chapman Memorial Plaza as well. You may remember the Iron Grandpa. <laughs> we named the little plaza after him there. So from here, they are then going to stop at the Bill Air Country Club. And I think what we will do is actually take them in. Why not? So let's take them in on this side and we'll add a stop. Is that some parked cars? It looks like it. Let's add a stop over this side. So we'll add one in there. And yeah, weirdly, it's just not showing the line, which is not super helpful, but we will deal with it. We won't have one. This is a residential district, so I don't really know <laughs> why it's so attractive. So we won't have one there. And actually, this is just regular nightclubs and residential again. So none of this is really touristy type attractions. We could now come out of Bill Air and through Prepare to Market before we go on up to the Williams Memorial Park, which I think makes sense. So let's go ahead and do that. 
So I think because we want to be taking this road up and out to the Williams Memorial Plaza, I think it makes the most sense to stop on this main road here. Let's just have a stop in there. And we can see it's made the bus stop dead, so it is working. And then we'll come on up to the Williams Memorial Park and Rocky Horror Park. Um, so actually what I will do here is stop it right outside the park. And then what we will do is create a walking tour at some of these stops. So this will be one example or the first example where we will create a walking tour from this bus stop. Tourists could essentially come here, get off the bus and then go on their walking tour around Williams Memorial Park. That's what we want to see. So from here, we will then come through and we will make a stop at Seven Oaks City Park. So let's do that right outside of the library here where it's nice and purple and there's lots of high appeal. Let's go ahead and do that. And then we will come on up to our castle area. So let's literally stop right outside the castle, I think, and we'll stop up here. Right outside the information booth, in fact, let's just bring that back one spot. Yeah, so it's slightly further back. And then again, we will do a walking tour around the castle area so that they can hop off the tourist bus, hop off the sightseeing bus, and then straight onto their walking tour around the castle there. And then from here, I think what we will do is travel through Canaladon and come up to the Ziggurat Garden. I'm just thinking the easiest route for them is probably to come up this way. Because then, yeah, they can head on out to the main downtown there. So I think that makes sense. So let's add a stop this side here. And then we will continue on down this way. Now, this is where we get to an interesting point. A pedestrian area, all of a sudden, is very dark purple. So it appears an entire pedestrian area is very attractive to tourists. You can use that how you will. But I actually personally don't think this is a big touristy type area. So I'm actually not going to stop here. And I am going to go straight from the ziggurat into the main downtown. So I think what we will do here is literally stop actually right outside these buildings where it is dark, dark, dark purple there, because that will certainly be the most attractive thing for them. And weirdly, even the ugly waterfront is not that attractive. The big wheel isn't giving appeal for tourists, which I find quite bizarre, but anyway. And then we'll come on from the central downtown area. And of course we are going to go into Universal Studios. So. Let's actually have a stop. We've got a bit of an administration building here. So let's have a stop right in the middle. And I've just cancelled the downtown one, I've just realised, by clicking the wrong thing. So let's add that back in. And then, yeah, we'll have a stop right outside this administration building, this side here. And then we will again have a walking tour around for Universal Studios. We'll also have a walking tour I'd add around the main downtown here as well. And then coming on out of there, I think it would make sense to stop outside the Theatre of Wonders. So we will have a bus stop over this side here so that they could catch the sights of the Theatre of Wonders. And then it will back out and come around this way. And of course, I think we are just going to have to stop at the Nodeberg Ring. So let's add in a stop actually on the road here, which is going to be slightly weird because it's in the middle of the car park, but they will have easy access to the entire Nobo Ring Park. And then again, we can create a walking tour around this area in order to satisfy those needs. So from there, we do need to actually close the loop. Um, I was thinking we could stop down the, by the marina here, but we won't. So let's go back and close this off. So we've already visited here, so I think we won't go back through that way. Um, and instead, we'll come around this part of the downtown and we will have a stop. I'm just thinking what road they're going to take. If they take this road back over, they can get up and through up onto this road and round. So we can stop at the back of the buildings here, which is quite nice and attractive for them that side. And then I would like to come on and stop down by the Okie Dokie Wildlife Park and all of the parks down here. So let's add in a stop again on this side of the road. We'll actually do it here so they're close to the park entrance. I think that makes the most sense. And then we'll come on down and we'll stop in this university area as well. So from there, I'm just thinking, yeah, they can take the road down through the middle here. So they could stop right outside this science centre. I think that would be a good space for that. And then we'll come back onto the main road. Um, and head down actually to prepare to market again. So we did have the stop on this side of the road, so we'll actually stop on the other side of the road this time and then back on through this way. So we, again, we could have stops in here, but I think it's a little bit unnecessary. We won't go back into the Bel Air Country Club. 
So we will just close off, I think, the line by completing it at Liberty Rock there. Now, of course, because this is a few sea tourist line, let's make it absolutely bright pink. <laughs> yeah, we'll just call it sightseeing. What the hell? Have we got two lines? I don't know why we had two lines in there. We had a little extra one. So let's just call this the main sightseeing bus line. And I wish it would show us the loop because that is incredibly, incredibly annoying. However, you can see on the road when you come down, you get these little signs where the tourist bus stops. So, yeah, that's what we need to look out for today where they are. Oh, and there we go. We can see it now, actually. So we can just check our loop quickly. So then next up, what I will do is create little walking tours, as mentioned. So the idea is that they hop on the sightseeing bus and they fly around Oradon and then they get off as a stop and they can do a walking tour. So there's only certain areas that will do this. We won't do it at all of them. And you know what? One place I have completely forgotten about is Exe Island. Now, what I want is for an easy access to this ferry. So we will actually incorporate a stop onto this line here. I'm not even sure if we're going to be able to do it because we can't, or we can drag the line. Yes. <laughs> Let's add a stop right there next to this tram so that they can. Yes, and we've got the bus stop there. That's excellent. Is it showing us the tourist bus stop? I've no idea. <laughs> anyway, they can get on the ferry and then come across to Exit Island. So. Let's start off here actually with our walking tour and let's create a new line. So we'll start right from the ferry terminal down here so people can gather essentially for the walking tour at this point. And then we'll come on in. So I think what we will do is just head around this plaza first. So we'll come into here and then we'll stop in the centre of this little plaza here. And then we will come on round and out to the riding stables. And then, of course, we're going to come back through and head on down through the old street market. And we'll add another stop right at the Sea Fortress this end. And then ultimately come back through. So we'll add a stop. In fact, actually, let's not add one there. Let's add one this end. And we'll have another one this side of the plaza. And then we will come back to complete the line which is going to be somewhere here. I think that's all right. They're walking around most of it, at least, anyway. <laughs> They're getting their stops in the most attractive places. So there we go, that's Exe Island. And we'll see how many tourists we get using these at the end of the episode. So what I will do is just go around and add a couple more into the castle ground, the movie studio, downtown, and the Williams Memorial Park. And I think that that will do.
Okay, so uh, there we go. So we have just got walking tours around all of the key areas, like this Nodeberg one here. They can walk around the entire track. They do walk some odd ways, like this little bit here, which I'm not quite sure what is going on there, but it will do, it will do. We've got off Universal Studios tour as well, which seems a little bit dodgy, but they do get to go into some of the sets, like this historical one here. So hopefully that will attract a few tourists. We've got quite a few using them already, actually, when we have a look at this. There's someone using every single one. This was the last one we put in, so hopefully that will pick up. So that's not too bad. XE Island Tour is clearly very popular there. But we'll see at the end of the episode how many more we get using that. Now, coming on to the last part that I did want to do today, which is a sports stadium build in this area here. So the only sports stadium that we have not used yet is the baseball arena and I think it will fit quite nicely into this space so let's just drop it in and then we'll use move it to position it now I was forgetting I removed the nose from this canal and canals do not like that so lesson learned do not do that but what I am going to do just to make sure it doesn't glitch out entirely is add a little node in the center there so that hopefully it behaves itself and we don't get too much flooding but what I would like to do is position this so we've got these stadium stands over this side and this wall kind of lining up to the edge of the key here. Now, again, this is quite slopey terrain, so we are going to have to manage how we work this. I don't really mind too much having a little bit of a lip here, but I think what we will need to do is tidy this up with a bit of key work, potentially the side or maybe some rocks or something just to smooth that off. So if we put it slightly further away, that gives us a little bit more room to play with in terms of the detailing. But that is how I would like it to be orientated. But yeah, it's not exactly nice views from the stand looking out over onto the highway and all the rest of it. It's not a great position, but what I'm imagining is this is the oldest st stadium in Oregon and all of this new highway infrastructure has been added since. So it's very open air. <laughs> yeah, I've got the canal there, so it's a little bit nicer that way. Now with this, I would like to continue on the pedestrian theme here and we'll continue on the blue stone because I think that makes the most sense for this side. So let's just grab that and we'll bring this out. Now what I do want is this coming straight out into the stadium. I think let's just turn snapping off for this and it's going to be a slightly odd angle. But if we bring it out like that, then hopefully what we can do is just twist this round just a little bit to get it to line up nicely to the end of this road. And that gives us a little bit more room by the river there. So that is, uh, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. We definitely want it straight on at the end of this road because I think that eye line is quite important coming up through the stadium there. And then now because these have got car parks on the front and obviously I could very easily just bob these off, but actually I think having parking in front of the baseball stadium is quite a good idea. So what I am going to do is just grab a normal two lane road I think with no parking. We'll do this one with the wide sidewalks. But let's turn a snapping back on and we are just going to bring out a road in front of this so that vehicles can very easily access the baseball stadium. And we do have enough clearance under this railway as well to get this road round nicely like this. We'll do a little bit of natural detailing. I'm thinking here we'll probably just tree brush this section in so it's relatively natural up against the road here. Now, clearly we want to make sure that these aren't interfering with the road so they may need to be a little bit of adjusting i think that's okay for now we can tidy that up in the detailing time lapse we'll probably do quite a nice little park area i think in this space but what that does do is then just give us access to the parking around the stadium for vehicles and i think out this way as well we'll just bring off a very small section like this to add a little bit more car parking in now, we do obviously have the asset that we have used before in Oregon, which is just this plain, simple car park, which sort of looks like the car parks that are on the baseball stadium as well. So I think this will help to make it feel relatively consistent. So what we'll do is just drop in a few of these and we will leave one gap between each again, like here, so we can add in some trees and some different detail in there. And one thing I definitely do want to do actually is on all of these trees, let's swap these out for a non vanilla older something that looks a little bit nicer. So let's have a little bit of a look. They're quite big trees. I don't mind the 11 meter one. Even the 14 meters, not too bad. That starts to get a little bit bushy there. Let's go for the 14 meter. And we will do the same on all of these. So we'll replace all of the olders found in each of the sub buildings here, which is just the one actually. 
yeah, that looks a lot better. And then we'll bring out the same olders into the car parks this side, again, just to help maintain consistency between the area and make things look like they flow just that little bit better. So now in this space here, what I would like to do is actually add Metro, because as you can see, if we go to our public transit, we've got this underground Metro line that literally runs right through the area. So we just want to divert it a little bit before it goes on into a ducky docks down here. So I think what we will do is use one of the content creator pack underground metro stations, which is this one, uh, which will fit in quite nicely into this space and also adds a little bit of grandeur in front of the stadium as well, I think, with these roofs and the open hole, that sort of thing. So that will really help bring people into the area and I'll connect that up again in the time lapse in a second. So I think with the rest of this street here, what we will do is line this with a little bit of nightlife and leisure buildings there just to give some kind of entertainment and that sort of thing around the baseball stadium, which I think would be a nice thing to do and you know, relatively common outside stadiums, I would say. And then down this side, what we will do is add in a road. Let's turn snapping off so that we can follow that key really nicely. But we'll add in a road right up to here and we'll connect that up with the pedestrian pass so that they can get easily onto this road here. So let's go ahead and just grab our concrete path and we'll just draw a very small connecting line there so they can get from road to road. But then in here we'll add a little bit of residential at the back and what I would like to use are some of the green cities assets and in particular these ones because we have used them before obviously in Canaladon but they do go together to make really nice little blocks. So what we will do is align the backs of them so that that is all nice and perfectly aligned. And yeah, what it gives us, we've still got access to the door here. All of the planters make sense around the bottom. Exactly the same thing this side. The balconies make sense. Even the roof actually looks pretty good on this formation. So what we'll do is copy that and have a few blocks of this along this side here. And you'll see in a second why I'm actually doing this. And that is really because when we come along this train track, what I want it to feel like is we've got the stadium there and then we're starting to get a bit more built up as we get into the downtown. Now you can see with the office park there as well, the view is really starting to shape up as we come down these railway tracks. We need to sort out a lot of this terrain actually. But also from the highway this side, it adds a little pop of height before we get to the old gentrified factory district over the other side there. Okay, so I think what that leaves us with is quite a lot of detailing around both this area and the office park, as mentioned. So in here, we'll add in those nightlife and commercial buildings. We'll create nice little park and sitting areas. There are some things around here as well. I'm kind of thinking maybe a big green open space up this sort of hill, because there's a little bit of a slope here with a screen so that people outside of the stadium can watch the match from the comfort of a nice green slope right on the edge of the really busy railway <laughs> tracks. They get quite a nice view down to Ducky Docks and over to the Fucular nuclear plant there. And up to the castle actually from here. So that's what we'll do in this area is generally tidy it up and obviously come in with lots of tidying up around the office park as well. So I'll go ahead and jump into a time lapse and I'll be right back.
Okay, so just before we go over the detailing that I've just done, I do just really want to quickly show you the public transport stats because I just quickly looked at this. And it seems like having those walking tools and bus tools in has elevated our tourists. And we've now got 7,181 per week using public transport. Only 3,000 residents, which I don't know if that's normal. You can let me know in the comments if you've had something similar, but wowzers, that seems... <laughs> That's definitely the highest figure that I've seen in Oridan and seems pretty high. Let me know what you think. And actually, just quickly looking at our tools as well. The bus tour isn't doing that well. It's only 28 per week. 29 passengers we've got here. A lot of the buses are empty. A lot of the stops are empty. There's sort of one, two, three, maximum six people on any one bus. So it doesn't seem that popular. Perhaps I've made it too long. But with the walking tours, we've actually got a lot of people on each tour. So they seem to be working pretty well and I will do some first person perspectives of the downtown in particular and some of these tours in a video pretty soon just so you can check that out if you so wish. But oh we flipped all the way across to the other side of the map but yeah let's have a little look at the detailing that we've just done on our office park and our sports stadium there. So yeah, starting off with the office park, we have just come in and tidied up a lot of the concrete surfaces around here. So I've added in pathways, a little bit of extra concrete around these to frame them off. Pathways onto the quay at the back here. Again, a bit more extra concrete brush just around some of these buildings around the quays at the back here, tidied this up. Added a little green space here with a few benches. I mean, the view isn't that nice. They're sort of looking out onto the back of the hospital and down towards the trains coming in. Maybe a train spot is a little spot there. <laughs> A couple of other little seating areas down here as well. I actually decided to add in a stage using the sub buildings again here with a boom crowd marker, which is working tremendously well. Actually, I'm really liking how that looks. Thinking this would ordinarily just be an open green space in the middle of the offices where people could go and sit in the sunshine and enjoy their picnic lunch while they have a break from work. But actually, I thought let's just use it to show that there's an event on at the moment. So we've got a little couple of pop up food trucks and the such like around there. And then around the rest of it, we really just have added in a few planters with different trees. This little bench design here, I'm quite pleased with the, the sitting sims. Makes it feel loved and used over here. Quite like how that's turned out. And then much of the same as we go round. I think the main thing here actually was the use of keys to level out some of this crazy terrain that we're seeing around these buildings. So we've just added in a small section here. The end of it is not perfect. It would be good to add a little fence, I suppose, along there, which is definitely something I can come in and change now that I'm suddenly thinking about it. But here it looks pretty good where it goes around the buildings, around the side here, and all of that bumpy terrain is now gone. So we get this lovely view from the street here, this elevated wall and these buildings as we go down. And what it does mean is that everything's nice and smooth as you come up around here. And yeah, onto, ooh, bumpy as we go through the buildings and into the main plaza. Again, we've just done little bits of detailing here. This is a slightly different way to cover up the train. It wasn't as steep here, so I didn't think it warranted a key. We've added in a path to help with that. And then obviously a bit of rock detailing, some roadies and a nice little seating area in there. But I think all in all, it's kind of come together quite nicely. Oh, and we did as well fence in the area around the service point here. And I actually used Bob just to shift these over slightly because they weren't quite working how I liked. Add an extra pathway in here so you can see Sims walking backwards and forwards down that side too. But yeah, I think all in all, it's come together quite nicely and actually really added a nice little touch to our skyline here. Nice extra peak with those two IT towers in the middle there. And then as we come on down to our sports baseball area, as mentioned, added in these leisure buildings, a couple of just high density commercial as well in here. And again, with the shift in terrain height, we have just used pathways to level this all out. So we've got a nice level pathway at the top next to these residential assets. A little bit of a slope down here, but we've still got access into the light club at the back there, I would add. But yeah, I think all in all, that's looking not too bad. We've got these trees just lining the quay at the back. I haven't made access to this quay because ultimately it just goes to a dead end in the road. So I don't think it's really for the purposes of walking along, but it looks nice. It's really there to frame our sunken railway channel there. So anyone in the UK will know what Henman Hill is for Wimbledon. And that's what I've tried to do here at the side of the baseball stadium. And then a big sports screen, a couple of little deck chairs. I kind of need some laid back sitting sims really to bring this to life, but it looks like it's sort of set out ready for people to come and enjoy watching the baseball on the big screen right outside the stadium. We'd probably get a sneaky little view into the actual stadium from here as well. <laughs> 
around the rest of it we've just come in with trees and a little bit of extra path detailing around the car parks there brought the concrete around the back so there is access to the back of these stadium stands around this side as well which i thought would be needed for health and safety tiny bit of rock detailing to cover up the terrain jankiness at the back there and then just a few little extra touches here and there this little section of food trucks on this corner Again, more leisure assets and tourism assets just to fill out this space nicely. And then this sort of open parkland at the front. Used a little bit of the ruined terrain here just to rough up the surfaces a little bit. But all in all, I think it's not looking too bad at all. Now, before we go, I do want to come on to a bit of district naming as mentioned. So first up, we'll start with our gentrified factory district. And there were a couple of honourable suggestions I want to mention for this. Cardboard ridden being one. <laughs> Imagine if this was an old cardboard box factory and that was from Ross Campbell. Thank you for that suggestion. Brixiden from Federico. That was another great suggestion. But the one I have decided to go with is the rail yard because it is obviously right next to the main railway and surrounded by the railway, in fact, with it coming right through the district here. So we can imagine that it used to be an old rail yard here with the factory and it's all just been gentrified and converted. That was a once upon a time little bit of history lore for Oridan there. And that was a suggestion by Doodle Plays. Thank you so much for that suggestion. Absolutely love it. We've got the rail yard in. Then flying on over to our mansion district, there were again a lot of nice suggestions for this. Liberty Point from Exy was a really nice one. Liberty Hills as well from Oban. They were really nice suggestions. Thank you for those. We had Fuverly Hills from Bokoma as well. Another great suggestion. But again, the one that I have decided to go with is... Orcluse. I don't know if I'm saying that right at all. And that was a suggestion from Brie Nicole, and that was based on uh, Van Cluse, which is the most expensive waterfront suburb of Australia with crazy median house prices there. So I thought that was quite fitting and quite a nice little play on words there. So we've gone for Orcluse for our mansion district. And then finally heading on over to the castle as well. And again, loads and loads of great suggestions for this. But the one I have decided to go with is Pew Castle <laughs> and really that was because of the airport and that was a suggestion by Krabby Piper obviously we got Pew Castle Airport so why not just call this Pew Castle <laughs> so somewhat reluctantly I have gone for it but I do love it <laughs> so thank you Krabby thank you for that but for today that is going to be it so if you have enjoyed this video likes comments and shares are all super 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 appreciated if you've got any name suggestions for our office park and for our baseball park, then please do drop them in the comments below and we will give that a name on another episode as well. But that is it from me for now. So thank you so much for tuning in. Stay tuned for the cinematics and I'll catch you again next time. Bye bye.